Bear is a Class 35 Heimach diesel hydraulic locomotive built by the Western Region of British Railways. He suffered from a few teething troubles when he was on trial, but struck a chord with the steam engines, especially Henry. The fat controller was impressed and decided to buy Bear and has been a credit to the railway ever since. Bear has never been in or caused any accidents whilst running the railway. He keeps himself out of trouble. But one day this is all about to change. Bear arrived to collect some vans from the harbour. Bill and Ben had shunted them overnight. They had stood waiting with their handbrakes hard on. They were comfortable and didn't want to move. Come along, called Bear. Wake up, it's down, we're off. The trucks grumbled to each other. Push off, we're not going anywhere. Bear was cross. He never let trucks speak to him like that. He revved his engine furiously. Someone called the zoo. There's a bear that's escaped. The trucks chortled to themselves. Give it up, snapped Bear. You'll come with me. Buzz off, shouted the truck. Bears don't go buzz, they go roar, cried another. Bear revved his engine even louder. I'll had enough, now shut up. Oh, temper, temper, giggled the trucks. Bear's patience snapped. He roared his engine fiercely, but before he realized it, Bear suddenly shot forwards and collided with the trucks. The trucks groaned as Bear was reversed away. His engine was shut down as the driver and guard inspected the damage. Uh, well, that's done it, sighed the driver, pointing to Bear's twisted buffer beam. If you can't pull the train like that, I'll phone control and get them to send another engine, said the guard. Bear felt very ashamed. He felt even more ashamed as James had brought the fat controller to inspect the damage. James showed little sympathy. You can always tell you're one of us by having your first accident, he chuckled, and still laughing, James pulled the train away. The fat controller spoke next. I'm disappointed in you, Bear. This isn't like you at all, he said with his arms crossed and shaking his head. Uh, I know, sir. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I just lost my patience with the truck, sir. It, it won't happen again, sir, quivered Bear. The fat controller gave a small smile. He knew Bear was truly sorry. You've got a good record of reliability, Bear. I want you back in working order as soon as possible. You will proceed to Vickerstown Works, where they'll do the repairs needed. The fat controller turned on his heel and walked towards the station ramp. Bear arrived at the works with no other mishaps occurring. The workmen were friendly and promised to make Bear as good as new. The fat controller phoned ahead and told us you'll be having a new coat of paint after your repairs, said a workman. Bear smiled happily as he was driven into the workshop. The workmen were true to their word. Within a week, Bear's buff beam was almost complete. Bear was pleased to almost be in running service again. He grew bored of being cooped up in the works and longed to be let out again. One night, Bear couldn't sleep. He knew it was very late, but he struggled to keep his eyes closed. Bear thought he saw a workman. He closed his eyes tight and then opened them again to regain focus. A workman was outside. He walked calmly over the tracks towards a line of empty trucks. What's he doing? muttered Bear to himself. The workman walked around the other side of the trucks. He was now out of view. There was a clanking noise, followed by a thud. Bear gasped. Why is he uncoupling the trucks and releasing their brakes? Just then, four trucks began to roll slowly down the siding. As they rolled along, they revealed the empty space where the workman should have been standing. Bear's mouth dropped. Where's he gone? He squeaked in disbelief. 
The trucks began to pick up speed, but they were derailed by trap points. Bear's eyes shot from side to side to see if he could find the culprit of the runaway, but the worker was nowhere to be seen. Bear refused to close his eyes until dawn appeared. That morning, the workmen discovered the trucks were off the rails. Bear was startled as the workman opened the doors of the workshop. Oh, thank goodness it's you. He sighed with relief. What's wrong with you? asked the workman. You're as pale as old Dean Morris. Bear was puzzled. Who? he frowned. Old oh, Dean Morris wanders around these works at night. He probably set those trucks off. He said cheerfully, almost forgetting the seriousness of the situation. That must have been who I saw last night, said Bear. I hope the fat cajoler gives him the sack. How can he? <laughs> laughed the workman. He's dead. Bear's eyes widened with shock. I I he's d d d dead, he stuttered. Yeah, of course, explained the workman. He was one of the men who built this works. But he made some enemies during his life, and one day he was murdered by another worker on site. He tried to hide Dean's body, but was caught in the act and was sentenced to, well, death. Old Dean Morris walks around these works, looking for his murderer, but will never find him, so instead he causes trouble. Bear had been speechless throughout this discussion. He finally found his voice. What sort of trouble? He whimpered. Oh, nothing serious. Just moving and hiding tools. It'll do you no harm. Nothing serious? Bear exclaimed. No harm? I saw him derail those trucks. But the workman wasn't listening as the breakdown crane arrived to reroute the trucks. Bear wasn't convinced old Dean Morris was harmless at all. He felt very uncomfortable in the works and desperately wanted to leave. Later that day, the workmen had finished repairing Bear's buffer beam and were now beginning to sand down Bear ready for his repaint. Bear wished they weren't. He didn't want to stay a moment longer at the works. Suddenly, a deep tone whistle filled the works as Douglas backed into the workshop next to him. Oh, hi, Bear. I hear you've been having some trouble. Yes, I am, cried Bear. It's this stupid ghost. Everyone says he's armless, but he derailed those trucks, and now I bet he's after me next. Douglas burst out laughing. Ghosts! He chuckled. I was wondering about your buffers, but if you want to tell ghost stories. It was a ghost. His name's old Dean Morris, said Bear earnestly. I think you've been in here for far too long. Ghosts can hurt ye. Soon, an inspector arrived to speak to the engines. Douglas, you cannot be worked upon until you have been cooled down and have no more steam. Bear, your repaint will only be quick. The fair controller needs you back in service tomorrow. Bear was pleased to be out soon. Douglas began whooshing steam from his safety valves and making eerie, spooky noises. Ooh, I'm old Morris. Bear grunted and took no notice. That night, Bear and Douglas were alone in the sheds. Douglas was still sizzling, with steam wafting from his steam pipes. As the Scottish engine slept, Bear was on the lookout. He nervously glanced from side to side to see if he could spot old Dean Morris, but he saw nothing. Finally, out of sheer exhaustion, Bear drifted off to sleep too. No sooner had Bear closed his eyes, footsteps could be heard in the workshops. The air grew colder. Douglas could feel the drop in temperature and began to wake up. He woke suddenly when he felt someone walking around his cab and filling with the controls. Who's here? barked Douglas. No one replied. Show yourself, he snapped. You are... Douglas suddenly felt his handbrake being taken off, as regulated being opened gently. Bear, bear, wake up, bear! exclaimed Douglas. But Bear was fast asleep. Douglas still had enough steam in his boiler to move forwards, 
Slowly and silently, Douglas felt himself crawling to the workshop door. Beer, wake up! I'm moving! He cried in fright. Bear woke suddenly. Help! Help! Shouted Douglas at the top of his voice. Bear could only watch helplessly as Douglas was rolling down the sidings. Luckily, a brake van had been left on Douglas's line. The Scottish engine rammed into the brake van. The van screeched along, struggling to hold the engine's weight. But eventually, it brought Douglas to a standstill. Bear was about to call out to Douglas when he noticed something in the corner of his eye. Old Dean Morris was standing on the line in the workshop where Douglas had been stabled. He looked threateningly at Bear. Bear froze. He didn't dare look. He closed his eyes tight, but he had to open them to see if Douglas was alright. As he opened his eyes slowly, he peeked through them to see if the coast was clear. Old Dean Morris had vanished. Bear's throat had gone dry and the temperature in the workshop had returned to normal. The next morning, the workmen were astonished to find Douglas outside. Bear's repaint was finished and he shunted Douglas back inside. The two engines tried to explain to the workmen it was the ghost of old Dean Morris, but the men took no notice. They would all roll their eyes and say what silly engines they were and how old Dean Morris was harmless. But Bear and Douglas knew otherwise. When it was time for Bear to depart and return to service, Douglas was very skittish. Oh, oh please don't leave me Bear with a wee ghost of ours, he begged. I'm sorry, muttered Bear. I can't. Be on your guard tonight, Douglas. And with a toot of his horn, Bear rolled nervously away, leaving Douglas to fend for himself. Bear is even more careful now on the Fat Controller's railway. He is determined to never have any more accidents, or he will have to face the consequence of spending a night with old Dean Morris. That is something Bear never wants to experience again. Duncan was cross. Whilst Rusty was in the shed for repairs, the thin controller had reassigned him to cover the maintenance trains in the little diesel's absence. I don't know what you're complaining about, observed Rusty cheekily. I would have thought the slow pace of the maintenance trains would have given you the rest you claim to be so deprived of. The other engines laughed, but Duncan didn't see the humour in it. What made it worse in Duncan's eyes was that he had to be out of the shed earlier than the others to tackle the track maintenance. It's utterly cruel for the thin control to send me out this early, and in this icy weather too, he complained. I should still be in my nice warm shed. That's enough, snapped his driver. I don't like it any more than you, but we have a job to do. So, I don't want to hear any more of your whining today. Is that understood? Duncan thought it best not to retort, and begrudgingly went about his work. By the time the work was complete, night had fallen. Fog began to settle as Duncan brought the work train into the goods yard. The atmosphere suddenly grew colder. Hurry up, hurry up! Duncan crouched impatiently. If Scar Lloyd takes my place in the shed, I'll... Hello? came a voice which echoed through the wind. Duncan's eyes darted around the yard. He looked over to the platform. There stood an old coach with a group of workmen. Who are you? asked Duncan. My name's Agatha, came the reply. We've been here for quite some time. Please, could you take us to the workstation so the men could meet their connection? Of course, Duncan obliged. He watched at the workmen board of the coaches. Duncan couldn't help but notice that they all looked quite pale. Must be the weather, he thought to himself. The firemen coupled Duncan to the old coach and they set off into the misty night. 
I've worked on this railway for years, observed Duncan, and I can say I've known a coach called Agatha. Oh, I've always been here, the old coach replied, since the line's earliest days, in fact. Though Duncan couldn't explain why, he felt a chill run through his boiler. The two chattered to each other, but as they rounded the mountainside, Agatha went quiet. She must have taught herself to sleep, Duncan said to himself. When they reached the workstation, Henry was standing at the platform. I assume these passengers are here for your connection, Henry? Henry shot a glare at Duncan. What connection? he asked abruptly. And more importantly, what passengers? The passengers in the coach behind me, argued Duncan. He looked back into his horror. There was no coach. But, but I... I have a timetable to keep, Henry huffed, and I can't be held up by silly little engine playing make-believe. The next afternoon, a team of workmen came to the sheds to see Duncan and his crew. We've searched high and low, said one, but we've found no signs of them. You sent us on a wild goose chase, added another crossly. We shall be making a report to the thin controller about this. You must have encountered Agatha, murmured Scarloy ominously. How do you know about her? asked Duncan. She was one of our very first coaches, Scholar replied, and began his story. Many years ago, Agatha was carrying a team of workmen to meet their connection at Croven's Gate. As they rounded the track's side, the old coach's front wheels jolted on a bound section of track. And what happened then? Agatha and the workmen perished in the abyss, Scholar continued. As the railway was still in its early days, management felt any scandal would be bad for business, and covered it all up. It has been said that on cold, foggy nights, Agatha's spirit reappears, not out of malice or revenge, but to bring her passengers home, but she never makes it past the mountainside. Duncan was silent. At first he had been frightened, but now he could only feel sorry for Agatha, that poor cool. He could only bring himself to say. Duncan has never forgotten his encounter. Often, when he'd be working at night, he would glance around the yards wondering if Agatha would ever reappear in the hopes that either himself or another engine could bring her ghostly passengers home. It was a misty evening at the smelter's yard. Harry and Bert were preparing to go back to their shed when a horn sounded in the distance. A long green diesel rolled in, a line of trucks trailed behind. Well, 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 smirked Harry. If it ain't old Bowler himself. What brings you here, eh? Brought you to a special delivery of scrap from the mainland, smiled the big diesel proudly. Lots of bits and pieces from rusty old steamers in there. Too late to be cut him up now, yawned Bert. Leave him there, and we'll end it in the morning. The twins rolled tiredly away, as Bowler was uncovered from his trucks. He was about to leave for home when his driver realised something. Your tank's nearly empty, he said. We should have asked those two where the fuel pump is. Yeah, we don't need those silly little grunts, grumbled Bowler. I'll find that pump no problem. The driver wasn't convinced, but didn't wish to argue. Bowler traversed through the smelter's yard, his lamp being swallowed by the thickening fog. You stupid weather, he grumbled. All Bowler could make out in the mist with the husks of engines past and littering the sidings. Filthy old steamers, he sniffed, glancing at their twisted remains. Only good for the torch now. What's happening now? He nearly shrieked. You've run out of fuel, you stupid diesel, sighed the driver. I'll go for help. And he did, leaving Bowler all alone.
with only a single flickering light post for company. The Diesel glanced around. Though the mist made things hard to see, something about his surroundings seemed different somehow. He didn't want to admit it, but it unnerved him deeply. You came a voice. Bowler looked around. H who's there? You did this. The voice slithered like an agitated snake. Very funny, you two, Bowler called, but it isn't working. Suddenly he felt a fierce bump from behind. Watch it, you stupid! Bowler stopped dead. The hollowed remains of a huge tender engine sat right behind him. He looked back and found other scrap engines now lining the once vacant adjacent tracks. H how? He began. You did this. The voice continued, now accompanied by several others. Did what? stammered Bowler. He thought he could feel someone or something staring right through his frames, but he didn't dare look back. We used to be useful. The voices hissed. We all were until you diesels came along. Ha! snorted Bowler, trying to sound brave. We diesels are the way of the future. Your time was simply up. Don't talk to us about our time! We had you. Years of life left in us, and you and you laughing as you sent us to be buried early. Suddenly, Bowler could hear creaking sounds coming from the mist. He stared in fright as several mangled scrap engines began to crawl out of the fog towards him. The eyes on their cadaverous faces, staring at him with nothing but pure hatred. Perhaps we ought to bury you, Hurley. It's your time that up today. Only good for the torch. Together, the scrap engines began to surround Bowler from all sides. The Diesel was petrified and could only stare at their gleeful faces as they inched closer swallowing him whole in their shadows. Take him to the cutter's siding. I'll finish him off myself. Bowler could only plead for help as the scrap engines dragged him away, shunting him into an overgrown siding surrounded in mist. We'll deal with you later. They sneered and limped delightfully away. Bowler stared frightfully around. There was not a sound to be heard apart from the maniacal cackling of the scrap engines. The remains of engines, coaches and trucks passed, littered the rails, and the air began to grow hotter. Almost as if he was being surrounded from all sides by torches, ready to cut him up. P please he whimpered, someone help me. There isn't much time, came a voice. Another rusted tender engine had appeared behind him. P please, he begged. Don't scrap me, please. Do as I say, and you won't be, said the engine, giving a comforting smile. Who are you? asked Bowler slowly. Uh, Another engine whose days were ended short, sighed the engine. It's not your fault. Time marches on, and engines get replaced, no matter how old or young. It seems these poor souls have forgotten that. But, 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 but why are you helping me? I'm a diesel, you know, and I haven't been very kind to you steamers. You and I aren't so different, really, smiled the old engine. I spent too many of my working days looking down on others for being smaller, slower, or weaker than me, when I could have made several good friends instead. 
Life's too short to be rude to fellow engines. I wish I'd learned that sooner. There was a long silence as the two engines snuck through the fog. Well, here we are, said the engine at last. Bowler looked around. He was parked right next to the fuel pump. Th 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 thank, thank you, he stuttered, breathing a sigh of relief. Why didn't you come back with me, Steamer? he asked finally. I'm sure someone could fix you up and put you back to work. Maybe your time's not up yet. C could, could I get your name at least? He stopped. The engine was nowhere to be seen. It had vanished into the motionless mist without a trace. Oh, there you are, cried his driver, emerging from the darkness. Where on earth were you? How'd you even get here? Bowler said nothing. Once he was refueled, he rolled quietly back home with much to think about. Despite his best efforts, he has never been able to relocate the sidings he found himself in that misty night. Ari and Bert think he sucked up another hat, and while Bowler can't make heads or tails of it, he is a different engine now. He no longer taunts the other engines with threats of scrap, and is much more mindful of those which line the sidings of the smelter's yard. In spite of the horror he experienced that night, Bowler is still hopeful that one day, he can find those hidden sidings again if only to find the kind soul that helped him find his way to safety, and perhaps give him a little extra time. Foco enjoyed taking the night goods. The evening air was crisp, and it was nice running with no other engine in One foggy evening, he arrived on the other railway right on time. He parked his trucks, and made his way to the shed. The yard was big, but Boko never had any trouble finding his way. Tonight, however, the fog was so thick that he had completely lost his bearings. Strange, he muttered to himself. I'm certain the sheds were around here. Finally, he smiled, but his relief was short-lived. <sighs> Shed's a shed, old fellow, sighed his driver. I'm going mad trying to find our way in this fog any longer. Boko was uneasy, but he didn't want to navigate through the fog any further. So he rolled silently into the shed and said good night to his driver. Why? Hello. <laughs> it's not often I have visitors. At last, Boko found his voice. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, he stuttered. I, I didn't mean to intrude to be. My driver and I got lost in the fog. <laughs> no need for apologies, chuckled the engine. Fog can lead you places you don't expect to be. Besides, it's nice to have company for a change. Well, thank you, smiled Bogo. I must admit I am surprised. I've been taking the night goods for years, but I've never seen this shed before. Or you, for that matter. You're not the only one. Seems I'm invisible to most who work here. You're a Sodor engine, aren't you? How did you know? You're different from the diesels that live around these parts. Much more courteous, for a start. I was a Sodor engine too, many moons ago. Used to work at the big station. Lovely place it was. <sighs> Only wish I had appreciated it more at the time. Why don't you return? asked Boko. 
I'm sure the Fat Controller would welcome you back with open arms. Oh, no, no, stammered the engine. He didn't have the patience for an engine like me. Nonsense, smiled Boko. He certainly wouldn't want to see you in a state like this. Tell you what, come back with me tomorrow. Tell me, asked the old engine. Is Edward still around? Oh, yes, replied Boko. I work on his branch line. Ah, I am glad to hear it, smiled the engine. A kind soul he was. I only wish I had been as kind to him. What did you say your name was? asked Boko. Oh, it's getting late, yawned the old engine. We'd better get some sleep now. We'll finish our chat in the morning. Boko's sleep was anything but peaceful. All night long, he dreamed of scrapyards. I didn't keep you up. I had an awful... You'll do a number on your engine staying out in the cold all night. Where's the shed? In the engine? <laughs> By the old porco. Strange breed, these sword old engines. <laughs> <laughs> When Boko's driver arrived, he was surprised too. Sheds don't just disappear. He set off for home with much on his mind. He didn't know what to make of the old engine, the disappearing shed, or his dream. He did know, however, that he'd be having a long talk with Edward. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video because it was not fucking made for kids.